Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to the program. Today, we are going to work on Yuct. And I'd like to implement a size of operator. So we're going to make a simple test program for that. And then we are going to implement learning the size of types, basically, because I needed that for something today and discovered that I couldn't have it. So um, then we got to implement it. And I guess we'll just print something out like size of i32 is something like that. And obviously, this is not going to work because size of is not a thing. Uh, and we need to add it to a bunch of places mm, to the lexer. Um, so we need a token for size of and then we need to parse it and turn it into a um, unary expression because it operates on a single thing, which is going to be a type name in the first case that we do. And then we need to type check that type name and eventually cogen a C++ size of expression from the whole thing. So I think I think I know exactly how to do this but it's been a while since I added something new like this to the language, so let's check it out. Uh, so first we add the token, and then we look for where, uh, where struct is lexed so that we can uh, do the same thing as we do for struct. We just lex size of to a token size of, sure, straightforward. And in the auto formatter, probably do the same thing. Sure. Okay. And then, um, assuming that we parse it correctly, I mean, lex it correctly, then we have to look at the parser. And um, I would expect to find it in the same place where you would find like a not, for example. So let, let i is not true. Um, you might expect to find size of in the same type of position, right? Like before something, not after. So it's not a postfix operator. And if I recall correctly, we should probably go in parse expression. Parse expression does parse operand, which skips new line, blah, 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 and then get the operand base and then potentially a postfix operator, right? So this would be part of the base. So we have a couple of different bases here, dot, try, uh, and here's not. So I think we can put it next to not here. So like size of, so now we're just um, parsing this token size of that we've encountered and oh because i need to yield something so parsed expression um unary op and i don't have an expression in this case it's just going to be a type name so i have to provide an expression here so i think i'm just going to give it the garbage expression I don't know if that's going to bite me in the butt later, but um, I think we can go ahead with it for now. So it's going to be a unary operator size of and the span. All right. So we need to add unary operator here. We just need to add it. Uh, I guess it's a new type here, so it's going to be size of, and then, then a parsed type. Um, yeah. I guess we can do that. And what are these? They are just checking for equality between two different unary ops. So 
Uh, size of. Um, has to be a size of on the other side as well. And um, actually, they just have to be like this. Follows the same rules as the is operator. Okay. Um, all right, so once we've done this, that means that we should be able to parse the uh, size of a thing to generate this thing, although we do need to put the uh, parsed type here. So um, parsed type, I guess. So how do we figure that out? Well, first we need to skip the size of token. And then say parsed type is parsed type name. Cool. And then I think, yeah, we just need to do the same dance as these other ones do here, just to acquire the, uh, like a span, that, so that we can do nice error messages if necessary. All right, and then x per span is not relevant. We're gonna use the span for the parsed type as the end of the span. Okay. Uh, wrong number of arguments. Okay, what's missing? We need an expert, an op, and a span. Uh, okay, I don't know exactly what's wrong with it, so let's see if we can just ask it to build here. Maybe we can see some more stuff. No, uh, variable garbage not found. Oh, maybe garbage needs the um, span. Yeah, there we go. Okay. All right. So now we have a new kind of unary op that's going to show up in the type checker. <coughs> so type check unary operation needs to know about this. So here's is. Um, and what's going on here is that just looking at how is is implemented. So is just type checks the expression. We don't have an expression, but it will pass through a checked op. And then um, the result is known to be a bool. So in our case, the result is going to be known to be a u size, an unsigned size type. Uh, because sizes are always u size. So I think we can just pass everything through except make it um, a u size. And we don't have an expression, but maybe that's okay. Check the unary operator does not have size of. Sure. All right. So where is check unary operator? Here. Okay. So we need to add size of type ID. Okay. Cool. Um, let's see. So what happens so far? Can we like build what we have? Type checker 6363. Okay, we're missing. Where are we here? Type check expression. It's a unary op. We're just converting the um, parsed unary op into a checked unary op. And I think since we have a type inside of it, we need to actually type check the type. So same as the is basically, something like this. And we are going to type check the type name like that. And then we need to yield a checked unary operator size of with the type ID. Um, hmm. I wonder, so here we're ignoring the errors. I don't know why that's necessary. I 
it might be necessary here too, like ignoring errors in the type name. I'm not, in the type name type check, I don't know. I'm just gonna skip over that for now. So now we're producing one of those and how far does that get us? So now we are going pretty, pretty far. We didn't do anything about cogen, so it's definitely gonna fall apart there. But I wonder if we can get as far as C++ cogen though. That would be cool. But essentially, we take in the size of token and the lexer, parse that, um, and in the parser we look at what comes right after and parse that as a type name. And then we, in the type checker, we type check the type name to see that it's a type that we know about. And then, okay, so the compiler builds. And then, yeah, okay, so cogen expression of bad AST node. Right. So I guess we have to deal with that. Bad AST node. All right, where are we here? So, oh, shoot, we are trying to cogen the garbage node. <laughs> so um, I was putting a garbage node inside of the um, inside of the unary expression because the type name is not an expression, right? It's just a type name. So I don't have a, an expression to put in there, but I feel like we should be able to dance around this. Like, um, how do we cogen for unary op? Right, so uh, here's how we cogen for various things. Here's is, type casts, and so on. So for the... Um, for the size of, we should really just have to do something like size of, right? And then actually the type ID, type ID will have to come later. Um, right, here's where we're getting screwed because it unconditionally cogens the expression inside the unary op, even if even if it's garbage. So I think we can do something like this maybe, and then say like, normally we cogen the expression, but um, for size of, we instead uh, cogen the type. That would be pretty slick if that works. Object is a bit of a weird name for this variable. Is that used further down? Um, okay, it is in one place. It's kind of a strange name. All right, I'm just gonna ignore that for now, but surely there's a better name for that. And, ooh, it builds. And it runs. Hey. <laughs> And it prints four. That's pretty cool. So let's just see what the uh, generated code ended up looking like. If we just take a peek here. So yeah, it just generates this. Very cool. Let's try um, something more. Actually, let me install the, the compiler that I just built so that the IDE should pick it up. There we go. Okay. Um, let's try to do like a generic data structure, see if that would work, because that would be super cool. So like a rect, for example, right? Um, so you'd have something like this. Also, why doesn't the type checker complain that I, <laughs> that I have the same um, variable field multiple times? I feel like the type checker should yell about that. Uh, anyway. Let's see, so if we make a rect of i32, that should give us, um, you know, the size of four rects, presumably 16 in this case. And then let's make a double size one with thicker ints and see what happens. That's so cool. <laughs> All right. 
Um, that is really slick. So let's go ahead and turn this into a little test. So expect, um, if I remember how to write these. So let's see, maybe we'll just, I'll just print them out like this. So we should get 4, 16, 32. 4, 16, 32. All right, and then we move that. Um, let's see, size of, maybe tests. I don't know what this falls under. It's part of everything, I guess. Say that it's part of Cogen, why not? Size of type. All right. Yuck test on that test. And it passes. And I think I'm not supposed to use dashes, actually. In the, uh, I always forget if it's dashes or underscores that we should use. A quick check. Obviously, underscores. Everybody else is using underscores. Geez. All right. Fine. I'll use underscores. Um, there we go. OK, so I think this is really, really straightforward, actually. Basically, the two things that are a little bit weird are that, mm, oh, that's a return. I thought that was a yield. Would have looked nice without the curlies. Um, I don't know if I need to suppress errors in the type checker when I'm type checking the type name because the is operator does that, and I'm not sure why. Uh, and I also feel a little bit iffy about putting the garbage expression inside of there, but I feel like it's probably OK since we're just skipping over it in Cogen. So <clears throat> yeah, I think, I think I'm comfortable making a PR out of this. So let's do a commit. And we'll say self-host, add the size of operator size of t. Um, this uh, first version only works on types, i.e. size of t. Um, yeah, it code gens to a simple C++ size of t expression. Cool. That's pretty cool. <laughs> All right. Um, that was really quick and tidy. So very nice. I think I'm just gonna wrap it up here because this is what I needed for the day. Um, there's room for improvement, like we could support size of expressions like they do in C++. But for now, I'm happy with this. So I'm gonna post this and um, yeah. Somebody requested a Yacht compiler hacking video on my last video. So um, I guess I just made one. Hope you like it. <laughs> Anyways, this is the end of the video. So um, if you made it here, thanks for watching, for hanging out. I hope that you saw something interesting here. And I am pretty thrilled with the progress we're making on Yacht, especially recently. It's picking up again. And we've got a lot of cool stuff like uh, static reflection and the start of some lifetime analysis and things like that. And yeah, very, very uh, nice to see it pick up pace again. Anyways, thanks for hanging out. See you all next time. Bye. <music>